So the very first question you should ask when you're thinking about how do you source deals is who do you know that I should know? And in any meeting or conversation or coffee chat or Zoom hangout or Tinder date that's now on Zoom, whatever it is that you're doing to meet somebody new, you always want to, uh, after getting to know somebody, ask, who do you know that I should know? And it's a great way to get introductions to people, but there's a few steps and things you can do to remove some of the friction that comes with getting introductions to people's networks. And the first thing you can do is offer to make it easy for them. And so one way you can do that is say, you know, hey, Mike, love chatting with you. Uh, would love to get connected with somebody who can help with X, Y, and Z. Uh, would you mind making an introduction? And by the way, I'll send you an email with a three sentence blurb about my background and a link to our website and what the elevator pitch is or the unique selling proposition. Um, basically give the person doing the introducing, uh, make their job as easy as possible. So if you can provide a few sentences and these sentences, here's a pro tip for all you writers out there or not writers actually, write it in third person. Don't say I do this, we do this because the person's gonna copy and paste the language and it's actually harder for them to edit the grammar when they copy and paste it because they're describing you know, what Paige and Chloe are working on. They're not describing what they are working on. Um, so write it in third person, use the, the company name or the organization name. If there's a link to a website, include that. Um, for personal introductions, you know, it's pretty helpful to maybe include a link to your personal LinkedIn as well. Say, hey, you know, I just met um, Chloe Lansdale. I'm picking on you because I can see you, Chloe. Um, you know, here's, and, and link to the LinkedIn. Here's her background. You know, she's uh, getting her MBA um, and she's really interested in renewable energy. I know you've been working in that space for 20 years. Um, was wondering, uh, not even was wondering, would you mind connecting um, with her for a brief intro chat? And there's a couple pro tips that I layered in there. The first is asking somebody, would you mind? It is the easiest way to get people to say yes to a question. When you ask, would you mind? Most people are like, no, I wouldn't really mind. Like, yeah, I guess I'll do it. Um, can you, will you, when are you going to do it right now? Those things are a little bit more forceful. If you ask, would you mind? I think 95% of the time I ask people that, they do the thing I'm asking for. And I use it pretty frequently because I know it's got a good acceptance rate for base level questions. Uh, the other thing to note is that just because you want to get connected to somebody somebody else knows, doesn't mean that person has any interest in connecting with you. And it doesn't mean that the person doing the connecting has the political or social capital in that relationship to make the connection. So it's very important to do what's called double opt-in intros where both parties individually opt in to connect to the other person. And um, a great example of this I'll get to in a second with Mike Ravenscroft, but basically you are, usually when you're connecting to people, somebody is higher up than the, the lower person. Like the founder or the CEO is lower on the totem pole than the investor who has the checkbook, okay? So if you have a friend who's an investor and any time, let's say he's a renewable energy investor, Anytime you talk to an energy startup founder, they're like, oh, introduce me to Dave McCarthy. Oh, introduce me to Dave. And you are just borderline spamming Dave with introductions to people who have renewable energy startups, some of which you have clearly not vetted and are not remotely either in line with his investment thesis at the right stage, whatever it is. You want to be targeted and thoughtful about the connections you're making because they do ultimately reflect on you and kind of your personal uh, brand and social capital with these people. So by asking and, you know, you got a forwardable, forwardable email or a three or four sentence blurb with a short pitch deck or a link to a website, send it over to Dave, say, hey, Dave, I just met this great uh, solar powered phone charging company uh, that's already got a couple hundred thousand dollars in revenue, highlight some traction, you know, they're getting ready to raise their seed round, thought you or folks in your network might be interested, would you mind connecting with them for a brief intro call? Thanks, Mike. Um, and when you send that email off, Give it two days, no response. Just reply, hey Dave, just bubbling this back up to the top of your inbox. Curious if you want to connect with this person. Thanks, Mike. I would say eight times out of 10, people say yes and opt in. I do every once in a while get somebody who says, you know what, that's not a good fit. I'm too busy. I'm pregnant. I'm going on vacation. Lots of good reasons. And then you look really good for saying, okay, cool, totally understand. Hope you're doing well. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you with. So you're trying to add value, this thing wasn't valuable and you didn't make the connection, you didn't waste their time. The person who asked for the intro, you just go back and say, hey, sorry, they said they were too busy. 
Um, unfortunately, I can't make that intro now. And that's that. Um, but that is one way to um, kind of build your network. And as you go through your career, it's not just, you know, who are the 36 other people on this Zoom tonight? Who else is in your MBA class this year at Wharton? Uh, but who has ever graduated uh, from Wharton as an MBA? These are people you can build some rapport with. Um, and as you build your network, your network's value is not how many folks are you connected to on LinkedIn. It's how many people in your network know each other and have you connected and are now working on things that you have nothing to do with, but that are adding value for both of them as well as their organizations and hopefully even the world uh, as a whole. So think about too, like where are there, um, let me use a buzzword, synergistic opportunities for you to create mutual shared value, an idea of a win-win deal where one of the wins is in all caps, win, and the other one's a capital W, lowercase i-n, you know, those are good deals, everybody's winning. You don't have to view relationships or networking or sourcing deals to invest in as a zero-sum game. It's actually a positive sum game because the more people who know about the deal, the more people who can put money in. And anytime an investor invests in a company, they want other people to invest too. Nobody wants to be the only investor because then the company can only rely on this guy or this girl's bank account. You know, having other investors creates social proof. It creates the ability to raise additional capital. They know that they're not only dependent on you uh, for either investment or debt financing or whatever it might be. And oftentimes investors want to invest because they see who else has invested in that company. Uh, so the social proof factor is really valuable. And as um, investors, uh, I don't know, more established or have more experience, they have people they like doing deals with. And because they like investing with these other people and they both got in at the same time at Uber or Facebook or whatever it is, when they see the next cool thing that looks like a good opportunity, they're just going to send the email and be like, hey, Mike, saw this deal, you know, loved working with you on that thing we just made millions of dollars on. You want to put some of that in this new thing? I think we could make some more millions of dollars. That's an intriguing email. And that's one way uh, that folks can source deals. It's by having a, a relationship history of working with people. Uh, and then those people that they have the network with will continue to offer them deal flow in the future. Um, so the next thing I want to talk to you about is this, let me actually pause. Does anybody have a question about how to make introductions and how to make it easy for folks to opt in for introductions from you? All right, I'm gonna pull up the chat here as well. So I have it in case folks do have questions, um, please do put them in the chat or let's talk through it. Uh, the next thing I wanna talk about is concept of the five minute favor. Raise your hand if you have heard of the five minute favor. All right, raise your hand if you've heard of Adam Grant, who's a professor at UPenn. Oh, good job, okay. Raise your hand if you've heard of his book or TED talk, Give and Take. Uh, a few, okay, people do a little bit more research. He's a good one there. I didn't go to UPenn and I read the book, watched the TED talk and have done hundreds of five minute favors, which um, I mean, we can share these slides afterwards with them because it'll link to that article on the five minute favor. Um, and if you are magically able to put it in the chat, go for it. If not, don't worry about it. But the premise of the five minute favor is that if somebody ever, and this is gonna be true from October 26, 2020 until you die, if somebody asks you for help with something and you can help them in five minutes or less, do it. Period, full stop, not full stop, full start to go help them. Anytime that you're able to add value to another human being or an organization in less than five minutes, just do it, all right? There's 60 minutes in an hour, there's 168 hours in a week. You have more than an abundance of time to help other people. And one of the key principles about the five minute favor is you don't keep score. You're not like, hey, you know, Arthur helped me for that thing last week and, or asked me for help and I did that thing last week and this weekend I'm moving. So Arthur, I'm gonna call you up and say, hey, you gotta help me carry my, my couch. Nah, man, I'm good. I'm not moving. I got a good setup here. But what's important to note is that if you start playing tit for tat and are keeping score and basically what Adam Grant would call a matcher as opposed to a giver, you're not gonna be as successful in your career. People that are the most successful across all industries, stages of life and businesses are givers. And people that are willing to give to others and help without immediately expecting return or payment or um, quid pro quo. Now certainly there will be instances where people will help you in the future and reciprocate because you helped them, but you're not helping them because you wanna call on that favor later. All right, you're not some like 
back channel politician being like, hey, I voted for that thing. Now you got to vote for my thing or whatever happens down there. All right. I'm trying to encourage you to just be a good person who wants to help and share information and make connections and add value to people. And so one example of this is uh, my friend, Mike Ravenscroft. He emailed me uh, a couple weeks ago. He'd gone on my LinkedIn and was like, hey, Mike, I see that you're connected to uh, these investors at Rethink Impact. You know, they've got an impact investing fund. They invest in women-led companies. And I'm working with this awesome startup that is um, basically bringing food trucks to apartment buildings to help provide dinner options for the residents. So they kind of aggregate this network of food trucks they have, will work with apartment buildings and kind of do deals to say, hey, we've got these three trucks coming on Taco Tuesday night, come on out, apartment residents, the buildings pay some money for it. They've got more than half a million in revenue. Um, I checked out the pitch deck, it looked pretty good. So he sent me the info uh, with a three to five sentence paragraph and a link to the pitch deck. I passed it along to the person he had asked to be introduced to and waited for a response. But while I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? I know a couple other friends who also work in real estate and what's called the prop tech industry, which is property technology startups. uh, And their names are Mandy and Jenny. So I took this email he'd sent. He'd only asked for one intro to these investors, but I knew two other people who I thought might be interested. So I forwarded that email to the two other folks to ask them if they wanted to opt in to an intro to Mike to connect with this company because I thought they might have folks in their network and um, relationships who would benefit from what the company is doing, either as a in potential investor or a potential customer and client. Um, within 48 hours, all three women had responded and said, yeah, I'd love to connect. Please make the intro. Phenomenal. Okay. And this took me definitely less than five minutes because Mike made it super easy. All right. He's a veteran of this. He's consulted with some investment firms. He's now an MBA at the University of Maryland. He works with the Dingman Center Angels doing all of their um, sourcing and selecting of companies, as a matter of fact. What a great segue to the topic tonight. So when you are friends with other people in similar roles, um, there are a lot of opportunities to create connections and introductions and just add value. Because the more your network is connected, the more value you can create and they can ultimately create together. Um, I'll I'll do a segue here too on on when you make that introduction. If somebody opts in, there's kind of two options and it depends on your level of effort, how important the intro is and if you're on your mobile phone or not. If you're just on your phone and you need a quick thing, just reply to the email, add the other person and be like, adding in Mike here, I'll let you two take it from here to chat because ideally you've talked to both of them, they know the backgrounds. But if you want to be more thoughtful and you're in front of a computer, I will almost always do the um, kind of Irene meet Andrew, Andrew meet Irene introduction where I literally say that's my first two lines and I'll, I'll link to both of your LinkedIn's and I'll say Irene this is her role and title this is what she does this is uh, a little bit of background what she's working on Andrew his role and title what he's working on a little bit of background and then the key is to give them a jumping off point to talk about don't just like connect them and be like all right Andrew you know me and Irene I'll let you two take it from here to chat what the frick are they going to talk about what's the reason for this introduction? What is there some Venn diagram of their life? Like, do they have similar interests? Or are they raising money as one an investor? Are they looking to co-invest on a deal? Are they both single? Like, I don't know why these people are getting connected unless you give them that opportunity to know why they're there. And if it's a pretty kind of level playing field, if they're both kind of peers, uh, don't expect one of them to be like, oh, I really want money. Like, let me definitely set up this meeting and this is super important. Give them a reason to want to talk and like, spend 30 minutes on a phone call or a video chat or something to get to know one another. So it's important that you be thoughtful and think about how folks are going to connect. This is all to say, this is how you network and build your network with introductions and relationships. You can also have shareable social media language. So Irene, if you can magically click that link and put it in the chat, because the shareable social media language here is an example from uh, the House and Incubator application, which just closed a couple weeks ago. Uh, We have more than 200 organizations we call communications partners, and we share this Google Doc with every single one of them and ask them to promote our application on social media. And I'm not asking you to write an original uh, post or tweet. I am literally scripting exactly what I want you to say, Um, and all you have to do is copy and paste it. And for Twitter, we make it so easy. You click to tweet, you click one button, you push enter, and your work is done. That is the most frictionless process you can possibly provide someone to send a message you want. And slides are gonna be a little bit out of order, but somewhere in here, 
it's like the kindergarten telephone game where you whisper in somebody's ear, they whisper, and it changes along the way. For you to successfully source deals and explain and articulate what you're working on, what your investment thesis is, you need to write what you want that script to be that's passed around. Right? You can't just expect people to creatively write a five paragraph essay about what you're working on and send it to everybody they know. Make it as easy as possible. You'll see